Good evening. As people are joining us from the waiting room, we are getting ready to travel to Akita and visit Akitabare Brewing Company, uh, the makers of Akitabare. This is, as always, uh, fun for us to, to get out there and do our thing. We, uh, we have such great sake uh, in our portfolio and so much fun to be able to visit each one of these brewers and in interact with them in a way that we don't get to very often. I, I don't get to Japan all that often, so this is really an awesome opportunity. So, Perry, tell us a little bit about what's going to happen this evening. Ah, yes. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, from Des Moines to the Bay Area to Minnesota to even from Italy, Francesca Guarderzi, Forza Azuri, grazie mille. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I just had to say that because I've been watching some serious Netflix uh, Italian dramas. Amazing. Anyway, um, back to sake. We will be having a quick introduction of our guests, followed by a tour of their facility, and also a short presentation about Akita and Akita Buri, the makers of Akita Bare Sake. Uh, we'll taste the sake together with the brewery, but please feel free to sip the sake now, as I'm doing. And also, last but not least, that's delicious. Uh, we'll have a Q&A and an interview with the brewer. So this is gonna be an exciting night. Happy Tuesday. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to sinking my palate into the sake deliciousness. Thank you very much. All right, well, we've got a lot of people there. Before we get started, I'm just gonna launch a quick poll. Tasho, could you uh, tell us a little bit what's going on here? Okay, so we're gonna take a poll and uh, just to see um, what parts and sights and flavors of Akita some of uh, our guests today may have experienced before. Uh, so uh, as you see the poll, go ahead and just check off if you've ever uh, tried or experienced any of these things. Uh, first on the list, Ibudi Gako. Uh, it's a type of sukemono, you know, pickled vegetable, but uh, in Akita, they smoke it first uh, with apple, uh, chestnut, or cherry wood chips. Uh, it's said to go great with cheese. Um, Kiritampo, maybe the most famous uh, dish, the local cuisine there. It's a type of nabe, originally made for the fearless winter hunters of Akita. And so it has cylinders of charcoal baked rice placed inside a hot pot. Sounds amazing. Uh, Ina Niwa Udon. It's a heavily kneaded handmade udon, slightly thinner and more chewy than other udon. And when I say heavily kneaded, that's a pun because I need to try that. Sounds incredible. Um, hata hata fish, a delicious uh, scaleless fish. Um, it's only caught during the winter months and apparently the roe on this fish uh, is incredible. Uh, Shotsuri nabe, uh, uses the salted and fermented hata hata fish with egg cluster or roe uh, known as buriko, not to be confused with the other buriko that goes brr, brr, you up. Uh, Barabera ice, ice cream, uh, which is ice cream shaped as a rose. Uh, Baba is old woman. Hera is spatula. So that's who would make that for you at the train station, an old woman with the spatula. So Bada Hera ice cream. I personally have not tried any of these things, unfortunately. I think I've had these smoked <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, the Ibudigako, but that's the only one. But they, they all sound incredible. All right, don't forget that amazing Akitabare sake. I'm gonna leave that poll up for a bit. And while we're letting you look at the poll and give us your answers, I'm gonna do a quick self-introduction. My name is Chris Johnson. I am the national sales manager for World Sake Imports. I have been a fan of sake for many, many years since I lived in Oita Prefecture in Kyushu as a jet teaching English. I then came back to the States and dug in deep. I am known at times as the Sake Ninja, and I really do love this beverage and sharing it. Excitedly been a part of the World Sake family for a little over four years now. Harry, could you introduce yourself for us? Yes, sir. Mine and I unmute myself. Have done this enough. Hello, my name is Kerry Tamora. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, this will be my uh, coming up 10th year with World Sake. Uh, originally from Chicago, started a sake lounge called Murasaki, which is still probably. Uh, they're serving the masses uh, with delicious sake and so happy and thankful to be here with you all. Thank you very much. And Pasho. Uh, yes, my uh, immersion in sake began in uh, 
about 10 years ago, just like Kerry, I worked at the uh, De Wazakuta Brewery uh, in 2013, worked at Miyasaka 2014, worked at Chidorigawa Brewery, and then 2015 at Kamoizumi Brewery. And as you can imagine, the experience was intense. It's like a Kung Fu movie. They're like, look at that huge steaming pile of rice, stick your hand in it, mix it up. It was intense, but uh, it gave me great appreciation uh, for the sake and the brewers. And I'm just really happy to be here with everyone here who shares that same passion for sake. And then Craig's gonna give you a, a quick howdy. Aloha kako everybody. This is Craig Tabandera coming from snowbound New York, much like Akita. Been enjoying sake for about 20 years, making my uh, rounds, working for World Sake Imports in Hawaii, and then also here in New York for about the last year. And uh, there is no more perfect beverage on the planet. <laughs> Agreed. All right, we're going to share the results of our poll real quick. Okay. Uh, it looks like a lot of people have tried the uh, Iburigako. We have 46%. Uh, Kiritampo, not so much, 29%. Uh, the Inaniwa Udon, 53% uh, lucky. Uh, Hata Hata Fish, only 14% have tried. Uh, the Shotsuri Nabe, only 14%. Uh, the Baba Heda Ice Cream, not too many have tried. Not many people have tried the old lady with the spatula. Don't knock it till you try it. Akitabare Sake, 64% of us have tried that. That's amazing because it is. Phenomenal sake, and we should all have experienced that. Right we're right. We're with the right people. Yes, sir. Exactly. Uh, and today we have a very, very special guest with us, mm. uh, who is going to talk a little bit about Akita, its food, culture, geography, and of course, at one point, introduce our host, uh, Keiko. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit of Akita and where exactly that is? Oh, oh, there, apparently. Uh, いや、今。はい。これやだけど。どうぞ。はい。はい。はい。今行きます。どうぞ。はい。はい。はい。行きますよ。こんばんは。こんばんは。こんばんです。I'm <笑> Keiko Sato from Akita. Akita is in northwestern Japan on the Sea of Japan. And it's part of the region known as Tohoku. The Tohoku region has lots of mountains, forest, and snow, with many seaside cities and mountain towns. The weather is mild during the spring to fall, with very cold and snowy winters, that is perfect for brewing delicious sake. Akita map. Yeah. Akita Shuzo is in the Alaya area of Akita City on the coast. My town is a Yuzawashi located in the mountain to the southeast of Akita City. We are Connected by the Omodogawa, the largest river in Akita, Yuzawashi translated to River Mountain City. We have a lots of winter skiing, onsen bus houses, and a ryokan to enjoy all year around. We have a long history of a tradition to celebrate. In August, we celebrate the Kanto Rantan Festival, one of the three largest matsuri in Tohoku. In the winter comes, we have the Kamakura Matsuri for snow hut and the sculptures. And just after the Shogatsu or New Year, the Namahage Ogra <laughs> appear. Akita is known for a Sansai mountain vegetable. Oshinko pickles, kiritampo, which is a pounded grilled rice skewers, served in a nabe or a hot pot soup, and of course, sake. Akita map. Of course, delicious sake need good water, and Akita has a 
amazing water from the melting snow that filtered through the mountains. Not only does our water make great sake, it's also it's perfect for maintaining the beautiful smooth skin of the Akita women, known as Akita pigeon. Even though we share similar water, the sake in my town is a much sweeter and healthier and the crisp, clean, lighter style of Akita bare, which pairs perfectly with the fresh fish and the seafood. They got being so close to the sea of Japan. Araya used to have a 10 breweries, but over time, they have crossed leaving Akita Bare as the last brewery to represent to the area's style of sake. Peiko-san, thank you very much. With all those great facts about Tohoku and Akita, before we dig in a little bit farther to Akita and its history, would you please invite Nomoto-san and Kogi-san to say hello and take us on a tour? I would love to. Now, to talk more about the brewery and take us on a tour is Akita Shuzo's president, Sho Nomoto, and uh, sales director, Toshiaki Kosugi. Nomoto-san, Kosugi-san, dozo, yoroshiku odegaishimasu. Hello, good morning and good afternoon. I'm Shou Nomoto, uh, after the of president. Uh, thank you for visiting my brewery. And my name is Koshiaki Kosuki, in charge of sales. We are going to guide you today. Yeah, we are very glad to see you all and happy to share Akita Shuzo's sake and our brewery. It is very cold today. <laughs> and, I see. Uh, in, in this morning, uh, it, is, it was snowy today, but thanks to you, it's uh, getting uh, sunny and sunny gradually. <laughs> Fantastic. We're excited for this tour. Thank you. So, uh, now from here, I'm going to tell you uh, about the Akita and Akita Shuzo. And also, um, I guide you to the delivery. Okay, so as you saw at the PowerPoint slide, uh, Akita Shuzo is located in the Akita Prefecture and its northern area of Japan. And uh, Akita has many famous, uh, famous things, such as uh, the Kanto, the summer festivals. Uh, the Kamakura, Snow House, Namahage, Ogre, and uh, elegant ladies such as Keiko-san, mm. and so on. Especially its famous goal, its uh, nice production of Akita Prefecture. We can get delicious rice and high quality sake rice too. And uh, Akita Shuzo is located in the Akita city. It's the center city of the Akita Prefecture. And there are about five breweries, including us. And uh, Akita City, as I said, Akita City is center of the uh, Akita Prefecture. So uh, many delicious food gathers, such as meat, vegetables, fruits, of course, rice. And uh, this city is close to the port, so we can get delicious fishes or shells or like, ocean uh, fruits. So we can get the uh, super delicious Akita's food and also delicious Akita's sake. And uh, I'm going to tell you about a little bit of the Akita Shuzo's history. We have the 112 years history. And uh, about 100 years ago, in this area, Araya, uh, there are more than uh, 10 breweries existed and flourished by the sake brewing. But uh, we became the last uh, brewery of the Akita Shuzo. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we became the last brewery in this area, Araya. 
Now, the reason why this can, uh, these breweries flourish by uh, in here is uh, it's close to the Omono River, the biggest river, longest river in the Arctic, uh, and uh, that river uh, transfers uh, good and high quality satellites, and also the skillful brewers from the upper side. And we, uh, as I said, we became the last brewery. So we uh, protect the tradition and also pride of the uh, sake brewing in this area, Araya. Okay, from now, we are going to guide you inside of the brewery. So uh, please follow me now. And uh, All right, let's go. And this building is registered as a, uh, a tangible cultural property uh, according to the historical body. And uh, I think so it's uh, face to the Lord, and so a little bit dangerous. Okay, so let's go inside. Yes. So suitable turns green, so the fresh. Yeah, new sake, namazake is just finished. Okay, so this is the entrance of the artificial brewery, artificial. And today, this entrance became the, uh, the shock of the artificial. We sell, of course, sake and some foods and vegetables harvested in this area, local area. This, uh, these are very fresh and tasty, so you can cook a nice food going well with sake. And we sell some limited sake here, so please visit here and uh, uh, please visit us when you come to Akita. Okay, so let me tell you about this place. This is the, uh, the Zashiki room. Here is the Zashiki room. This room is used for the, uh, this is the tatami room for the guests. We use this room for uh, when guests comes or the event uh, we have. And then on the opposite side, we have the gardens. Very beautiful gardens. And, wow, that's great. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we had actually two gardens in the breweries, uh, brewery. And uh, you can see them only when the guests come into the Zashiki, this room. And because these gardens are for the uh, welcome of the guests. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about. This one. Do you know what is this? Now, this is the noren. Uh, noren is the like Japanese traditional shop curtain. And uh, if you can read the Japanese kanji, uh, you can know there is no word of akitabare. Akitabare is written like this. Akita ba, akitabare. But there is no word. I'm going to tell you about a little bit because this curtain indicates the history of us. Uh, uh, Akita Shuzo was established there as Kuni Banzai Shuzo. This word is written uh, is Kuni Banzai in uh, 1908. And the founder of the, uh, our, our brewery is Kawaguchi, Shinsuke Kawaguchi. And he first has come to name this brewery as a Banzai Shuzo, not Kuni Banzai, but Banzai Shuzo. This Banzai means the word to uh, when people have their something great or a memory of happens, people shout this word like Banzai. It's it's like the Yahoo or Honai, like that. 
And uh, he, but he had the word kuni. There is a reason. Uh, at that era, uh, Japan and Russia had a war. And uh, many people in the world thought that Russia will war at the war. But uh, actually, the Japan won that war. And uh, many people get surprised. So here at the word, this one, kuni. Kuni means a country. So he uh, named this brewery as Kuni Banzai. And so, what is Akita Shuzo? Akita Shuzo is uh, established in 1969 as a bottling and a retailing company of the Kuni Banzai Shuzo. And uh, after the, uh, several years, and it was the 2013, uh, by merger of the Akita Shuzo and Kunibanzai Shuzo, we became uh, Akita Shuzo officially. And uh, okay, let's go the inside of the novel. Okay, so from here is the brewing space. We brew sake here. Okay, so this is state place uh, of the odoriba, the place to use the water and clean the tools and uh, use water and wash the lices. This is lice moisture. <laughs> we were going to use this one. Come now. Okay. Next, I'm going to tell you about this place. This is the Kamaba. Kama is the pot. And this is a place to steam the rice. And uh, this is the Kama, Wagama, the big traditional Iron Man pot. And uh, we use this pot to uh, steam the rice. On the pot, there's a green one on the on the pot. And uh, this one is called as koshiki. This is a big, huge steamer for the rice. And uh, the brewers pour the water in the pot and set the koshiki steamer on the pot. And uh, next morning, uh, the brewers set fire on the burner under the pot. And, and the steaming start. And uh, after steaming start, white uh, the steam rises into the uh, above, and these white smokes join into the chimney over there. Can you see? This is very uh, special thing of the Akita Shuzo. It's the hexagon shaped roof. It's uh, this shape, I hear that uh, this shape effectively drawn the smoke or the steam into the chimney. And this uh, chimney, uh, sorry, this steaming is very, very beautiful scene of the Akita Shuzo. And uh, I want you to show you how beautiful it is. So um, I took the video and uh, I, took the, I made a movie for the sake steaming. So please take a look at that.
Okay, so after uh, the steaming finished, as you saw, uh, the what brewer gets into the koshiki and uh, he uh, scoop out the rice from the, uh, the koshiki into the this one. This is a cooler, cooler machine. And uh, this one was really, this one is really tough because there's still the steam rises and uh, it's very hot. Of course, rice is very hot. So it's very um, tough work. Okay, anyway, so after uh, putting the lights into the cooler, we uh, use uh, this cooler and lower the temperature of the lights. And we bring the lights to the next space. Okay, let's go to the next space, which is uh, Hojimuro. Here is the Kojimuro. And uh, this is Koji room. Or the Seikikushitsu in Japanese. And in the, on the front of the door, there is a twisted rope called as Shimenawa. This Shimenawa means the barrier to protect the inside on the Shimenawa from the evil things because uh, this inside is the sacred place. Many people, many viewers visit the shrine before the sake viewing starts and uh, pray to the God of the sake viewing success of the year. Today, many viewers use the big machines or the huge box for make the large amounts of the koji at once. But we use this one. You see, this is the koji buta, the cedar bo uh, box made by the cedar. Uh, using this small unit of the koji, uh, we can control the temperature of the koji easily because like the inside of the a center of the coach is hot and it is, uh, is cold like that. We can control easily, but this work is very really tough because we have to take care of the huge number of the koji buta up. So uh, it's, it's need of many effort and of course time, but uh, we choose this method to control and uh, to make the uh, high quality sake of the Akita Shuzo. And, uh, uh, the koji process is very uh, sensitive. So uh, we cannot get into this room today, but I took the uh, video and made a picture, uh, made a movie for the koji making process too. So please take a look and feel it. Thank you.
It's crazy. They're like showing each step by making a video. This is awesome. Indeed, it is. For watching. In Japan. Oh, thank you. This is how we make the koji in the morning. Uh, this koji making process is very tough, but um, by this uh, the koji buta making, we could get the high quality koji and we can give you the high quality activated sake. Okay, after making the koji, we bring the koji to the moromi or the moto. Moto is the like sake starter. And we make the moto here. This is the motoba, the, the moto making place. The purpose of the making moto is the purpose of making moto is to increase the quantity of the yeast of the, for the sake brewing. And in the nature, a huge number of the wild yeast is floating, and the, these yeast are a little bit uh, strong. And the sake brewing yeast are relatively weak. So the brewers have to protect them by arranging the, the environment of the moto. But we choose the sokujo style. This is the, uh, the kind of newest style for the sake brewing. By using this style, uh, we add the lactic acid itself in the, the moromi, uh, sorry, in the moto tank in advance. And after that, we arrange the environment and add the acid, uh, yeast inside the tank. The reason why we choose this method is this is the, uh, I think, we think uh, the ideal for making the Akitabales balance of the taste. So we're proud of this um, method. We, uh, uh, in the history uh, for a long time, we use basically two yeasts, one for the suyakuten and one for other sake. And uh, one is Sinakten yeast is very fresh and uh, uh, have the fruity aroma. And other sake yeast is very rich taste we can make or the rich acid. And, but today we uh, updating our skills and we challenge to the new style of the sake brewing. So uh, we choose other uh, the yeast and we're challenging or looking for the new style of Akita Shuzo. And then we can tell uh, you about the new style of Akita Shuzo soon. So please wait for that. Okay, let's go to the next place. After making the motto, we, you, uh, we make the moromi. Here is the shikomi hura. This is the place to ferment the moromi. Moromi is the sake mash. So I want to tell you how the moromi looks like. So please come from this side. This is the moromi of the Sri Lakten. And today we have there are four tanks. Is uh, filled with the moromi, and uh, I want to show you how it looks like. It took the uh, twenty days from the moto, and the rice is uh, almost melted and it became uh, become the white mush. Uh, I'm sorry for not to be able to send you the aroma, but this space and from this tank, uh, it's 
uh, we can uh, build uh, several fresh and present aroma of the sake. So please wait for the kanpai for a little bit moment. Okay, so the brewers walk here and uh, mixing the tank and uh, measuring the sake meters and uh, the cleaning the tank every day. Um, so how we uh, mix it? We use this one. This is called as kai. Kai means the puddle in Japanese. We use this uh, long stick to mix the, the sake, uh, the, the moromi. But this is a, a little bit short one because this is for the this tank. And sometimes we use this huge tank and we work on this uh, wooden scaffold. And for mixing this huge tank, we use this one. This is very long, long uh, stick to mix the, the moromi. It is uh, more than three meters, or, uh, three feet, uh, sorry. Three years, three years, more than three years. Very long and it's a little bit heavy. This is very tough one to mix there. This tank by using this stick because we need, of course, power to mix it. And also, this place is a little bit narrow and uh, as you can see, this is high place. So it's a little bit dangerous to work. So the viewers pay maximum attention not to uh, the prevent and not to make the accident, prevent accident. And by using this concentration, we brew beautiful and tasty sake for you. After making this moromi, uh, it's about it takes about four weeks of the fermentation, and we will bring this monomy to the next phase. And uh, before I tell you about the uh, presser and the uh, pressing phase, I want to show you this one. Can you see the small shrine with the small sugidama? See the bowl? As I said, the uh, sake brewing is the, the Related to the Japanese mythology, uh, the praying for God. And uh, then here is the, the small shrine, and we pray for the Matsuo sama, uh, which is the uh, whom, who is that? Uh, Matsuo sama. He is the, the God of the sake viewing. And uh, we pray for the Matsuo sama for the success of the Akita Shizu sake making. And uh, I have one suggestion for today, it's not on the screen, but uh, um, please uh, pray for the, the Matsu sama with me, and uh, then we will get the high, more and more high quality sake. So I want to pray with you on the screen and uh, for the success of the Hakte uh, Shizos, the sake brewing. And uh, how, how to do it? The, how to do the pray is uh, two bowl and two crab and one bowl. Okay, so please follow me. Okay, two bowl, one bowl, two bowl, and two crab, one, two, and one, uh, one bowl. Okay, thank you very much. Um, th thanks to you 
I'm sure we can get the more bet, uh, better, better sake for this year. And uh, I'm sure if we can uh, overcome this the situation now. Okay, let's go to the next place. Oh, I sh um, this is the miracle well. It still gives us the natural water. We use this water for the sake itself. So we use this uh, water importantly. And here is the place to store the sake and bless the sake. This is the Yabuta. The Yabuta is the name of the this person. And, uh, after making the moromi, after making the moromi, we bring the moromi by pump here and uh, and we put the moromi into this yabuta. And this yabuta works to separate moromi into sake and sake kasu. And Sake kasu is the, the, like the sake cake in, in English, but it is, looks like this. I'm sorry, we don't have the real one, but this and white and plate shaped one is sake kasu. We separate sake from uh, moromi from the, this sake cake and we can get the sake itself. And uh, this sake cake is very tasty, and uh, we can use this for the, the cooking or the uh, amazake. It is moromi looks like no alcohol drink. And we sell this uh, sake kasu at the shop, or we process this sake kasu into this one. This is also kasu, but we call this one is as medikasu. This is uh, miso looks like seasoning, but not um, salty. It's have the rich, tasty, uh, rich taste and uh, umami. So uh, I think this one in for the, the Japanese cuisine, it's gonna be have the more rich or the deep taste. It's very nice and I suggest you to have this one. Okay, anyway, um, after pressing, we send the sake to the factory and we do the other uh, like bottling stuff in the factory. So, uh, but the factory is a little bit far from here. So let me show you a little bit. Can you see the building over there? That is the factory. We do the buttering or the uh, pasteurizing, labeling, and shipping at that building. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, according to the, the time constraints, we cannot go to the beauty. But if you have interest, please um, visit us and uh, I will take you to the factory. And uh, that's actually, that's all for the guide today. And uh, thank you very much for your listening and also your praying. And uh, we are sure to make the best sake, uh, sake ever in Akitabadi's history for you. Thank you very much. As they're walking back, they had to walk back through the whole tour that we just took to get back to the very first room we saw. Uh, so we're, we're waiting for them to get there. But again, a, a absolutely tremendous, tremendous tour. So much history. That's, and that's... the videos were great. And the fact that he had us pray for great sake this year, mm -hmm. all of us got to be involved in, in the better brewing year for, for Akitabare sakes, which is totally cool. Mm. Uh, I love that. I really mm -hmm. love that. That was awesome. Yes. 
hopefully the uh, prices won't change next year because the sake will be so much more delicious after everyone's prayer. But this is only hope, and we'll try to keep the prices down. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. Hi, Nimasa, Shosan, Dozo. Yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone. Before Kanpai, I want to introduce the brewers. This is Mitsuru Kato. He is a Toji, master brewer of Akeshuzo. And this is Gen Kodate. He is assistant Toji. Kato Toji will retire in this match. And he brew Akeshuzo sake from next year. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I want to come by with them. Yes. We're going to we're going to put it to gallery view so if you have the view on gallery you'll be able to see as many people uh, who turn their cameras back on <laughs> for the comp by. Shosan. Ready? Are you, are you ready? Yes. Yes, okay. All right. Those all. Three, two, oh. one. So this is the spring snow. Absolutely. It's a brilliant, brilliant sake made by Ginnose, local rice varietal, 35% polished off. Alcohol is 14 to 15%. This is a Honjozo, which, which has been fortified. It's a Jinmai sake fortified with a little bit of a distillant. It's also unpasteurized. Enjoy. Shusan, dozo. Yeah. Then we introduce our sake. Shunsetsu is classified as Honjozo Namachuzosu. A feature of our Honjozo is its, its balance of sweetness and clarity. In process of making Honjozo Moromi, we add delicately sweetened rice. It likes Amasake. By these methods, we can control sweetness and umami of sake. You can enjoy mild sweetness and little, uh, fin little finish. Yeah. Delicious. Arigatou gozaimasu. And right finish, I'm sorry. Mechakusho oshii desu. Yeah, it's, that's 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 beautiful. Um, I do have a, a quick question um, when it comes to the sake that you make, and this is a question for for both Toji's. Uh, are you a member of a Toji guild or the Sanmai Toji? Sanmai Toji Kumiyani, so to say, it's All all right, so the answer is yes, they're part of the um, they're part of the San Sanai uh, Toji Guild. Uh, so that was an answer to one of the questions we had earlier. Uh, delicious, delicious sake, beautiful fruit. Um, Innose rice is and a very important rice for us. Um, what what draws you to Ginnose rice? Ginnose no, ano, tokchou he said, and, uh, the ginose has a large amount of the protein inside and uh, it produces a very uh, rich umami for the sake. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to move to our next sake. Uh, Craig, can you uh, introduce us to the Northern Skies? Yeah. This might be the second sake that we're trying tonight for Akita Bare, but for me, it was always my first. Um, I still find it delightful. I think it's fantastic that um, they stick with the Ginose rice varietal uh, as, a, as a regional grain uh, along with their yeast. And I just think that it's, uh, it's, it's really difficult to beat this as anybody that wants to think they don't like sake as an introductory sake to bring them in and trap them in our world it's it's genius all right uh nomoto san dozo yeah koshiki junzukuri is only traditional junmaishu in akita shuzo 
Koshiki means traditional, not steamer for sake brewing, and junsukiri means pure brewing. As you saw in this tour, we partially use traditional tools and methods. That's why we need it koshiki junsukiri. Taste of this sake changes by the temperature. I recommend you to drink it cool first. So cooling, you, feel, you can feel a little bit shape acido and it enhances the dryness of sake. By warming, it gradually becomes mild rich taste. So you can enjoy for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. It's such a good sake at so many different temperatures, which is what's so wonderful about I mean, sake in general, but specifically this particular version from uh, Akita Shuzo, uh, this Northern Skies or uh, Koshiki Junzukuri really does express itself in such a beautiful way at different temperatures. Really, really, really fantastic. Very versatile. All right. Let's do it. So Tasho, you are All up right, for the next sake. To Akita Bare, Naginjo or Moonstone, it's always a pleasure to drink this sake. Um, the first thing that strikes me about this sake is the texture. Yeah. Silky, smooth, mouthfeel. Um, it's so smooth and light, but it has a richness and a depth to it. Um, something to chew on, uh, notes of pear, melon, sugar cane, um, and then a little bit of umami that balances out very nice. Um, and for pairing, I actually paired this today with my lunch. I had a grilled uh, grilled chicken with the Greek salad, and it was phenomenal. As our peeps in the Bay would say, it was smacking at a combo. Uh, and uh, Moonstone really lends itself to that style of cuisine um, as a flavor enhancer. Uh, nice contrast with the creamy yogurt. Um, uh, and then the sweetness kind of softened the acidity uh, from the vinegar and olive oil. Just fantastic. But um, let's find out more about it uh, from the man himself, Nomoto san. Yeah. Akitabari Daiginjo is relatively new sake in my brewery. Akitabari Akicha is very famous for sake brewing, and brewers are developing new East. This sake is brewed with Akita's new East. East Akita Yukiguni Kobo UT1. This yeast can produce fruity aroma without a flavor. I use the sake rice called Gin no Sei to brew this sake. Because the sake rice developed, try my, uh, developed by, grand, my, by grandfather. So I decided to use this rice for new akitabare. You can enjoy delicate and fruity aroma, smooth texture, and balance of this balance of taste. Arigatouzaimasu. Fantastic, thank you very much. So I know we were talking about Ginnosei as a, an akita rice. It is also very special to Akita Shuzo because uh, Nomoto-san's grandfather was part of creating that sake rice. Another reason why it plays a, a, a good sized role in their brews. Remember, if you have any specific questions, uh, please put them in the chat so that we can ask uh, the, the Tojis who have taken some time for their day to be here with us. We have a few just in case you uh, you don't have any, we'll throw some more at them, but if you have some, please put them in. in. And so why don't we do one more Kampai as we're moving towards our next, uh, our next sake, which will be the, the Sui Rakuten. So, Mamoto-san, dozo, Sui Rakuten no hanashi. Yeah. Sui Rakuten is our flagship level of Akita Shuzo. About 33 years ago, my grandfather started Sui Rakuten, and it attracted many people. In Sui Rakuten's koji making process, we cool down the temperature of rice by hand. Toji control all process by his technique from long career. Now, next Toji is learning all process and control. 
The taste of sweet latte is very beautiful. It has fruity aroma like pear or muscat. Also, it tastes mellow, mild stain finish and smooth finish. This is because we pasteurize this bottle. Ah, we pasteurize it in bottle and we age it for two years in the refrigerator. Please enjoy it. Thank you. Yes, it is very, very enjoyable. This is such a wonderful sake, so expressive, uh, delicate, and, and yet depth. Uh, th those two years in the fridge really do add to it. Uh, the in-bottle uh, pasteurization is a key for the sake to be as exceptional and elegant as it is. Um, I do have a quick question uh, for the brewers. You say in this description that we were using their uh, their hands uh, to learn, communicate from, speak to the rice, the rice koji, what does the rice say to them and, and what do they learn from touching it? He said, like, and uh, the Koji or the rice said that it's, uh, um, we, I, I want to drink w more water or it's, um, it gets dry, so I need water. So um, he, uh, at, he, by controlling, he had the moisture or the heat field uh, temperature, and he control it by his hand and feel it. So by touching the rice during the soaking stage the and the koji production stage, you can tell where it is yes. by hand, not just by a thermometer or by charts. It's the actual feel of the, the skill set of the brewery. They're touching that sake. That's why Suirakuten is such a special sake. Uh, as he said, 33 years, it's been the same the same production uh, since his grandfather uh, started that sake. So truly is a special one. Uh, hopefully uh, a, a few of you were able to, to get some of that. As I said, why don't we go back to everybody doing another quick kanpai and we'll say, uh, Shosan, thank yes. you very much. Kanpai. Yes, thank you. Kanpai. Kanpai. If we could mute one more time, I've got a couple other questions. Uh, the koshiki, koshiki san, koshiki, how, how many yes. kilos uh, of rice can you fit into the koshiki steamer? Koshiki no naka ni wa dore grai ni ogome ire ta de masu ka? Dore grai ni ogome ikkai de? Ikkai de. 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 Okay, it's uh, it's depend on the the day's work, but uh, the most uh, uh, the uh, the heaviest time it's about uh, two hundred and seventeen. Oh, sorry, two hundred and seventy kilogram of the rice is uh, steamed by the koshiki. Awesome. Um... Any other questions for the Toji right now? Craig, Harry, Kasho? Uh, yes. uh, very quickly, um, some of our guests in uh, Hawaii uh, were unable to get the Surakuten, so they're drinking the Surakuten uh, Jumai Daiginjo. Would Jumai you mind please, um, sharing, us, sharing with us the difference between the two? What, what would you uh, say is the, the main difference besides okay. the uh, not adding the alcohol? Oh, okay. So the Junmai Daiginjo and the Daiginjo, of course it's uh, the alcohol, alcohol, but the difference is alcohol, but uh, the Junmai has the more acid and the umami inside. Mm -hmm. So it has a rich taste and uh, the, 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 how to say that? The texture is more smooth, I think. So it's gonna be uh, more, uh, have the white, spread of the taste and feel the 
uh, the present and uh, the tastiness and the sweetness of the, the rice. Awesome, thank you. Craig, you have a question? Yep, uh, somebody in the chat had asked uh, about the Shiminawa. Who, who makes the Shiminawa for Akita Shuzo and, and how old are, are the typically like the ones that we've seen? Okay, Shiminawa wa, ano, donata ga tsukurete, dore gurai tsukurete desu ka ne? And the ex master of the factory, he, ha he has the skill to make the Shimenawa and he made, he made it. So it takes more than, dore gurai desu ka, 30 nen? Yeah, oh, the, it's the new one. So uh, we make the shimen unawa by, by each year. So it's it uh, have about one year, and we make the new ones and uh, we renew it soon. Very cool. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, Dave, if you could share the last pictures for me. I wanted everyone to uh, to see this is the crew as it comes into focus, hopefully. Uh, this is the crew that makes this beautiful sake that you got to enjoy today. I want to thank uh, Nomoto-san, uh, Kosuki-san, uh, Kodate-san, and, and Kato Toji uh, for spending time with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Tomo arigatou gozaimashita. Um, I also would like to thank our friends that got sake into your hands. Uh, so we go to the next slide in no particular order. Uh, we have D Shock Ramen, uh, High Times, Harajuku Tap Room, Izakaya Takase, Far Uwe Rukamu, Milk Farm, Suzaki, hey. uh, KL Wine Merchants, Silver Lake Wine, True Sake, Full Moon Sushi, Soichi Sushi, DC hey. Sake Online <laughs> Shop, <laughs> Fujioka Wine Times. Uh, Madukai, the sake shop, vintage wine cellar, Murasaki, uh, summertime jazz lounge. Uh, those are both in Chicago and Mount Prospect, Illinois. Hi. We have Ambassador Wines, Kuraichi, Meichi Liquor, Sakaya in New York. Uh, we have Surdix uh, Liquor that supported us in Minnesota. We have oh, Uajima in Surdix. Oregon. Namazake, Namazake Paul, who gets all sorts of people. We appreciate it. Uh, Hanyato Sake Nomi, Shabu Shabu Kyoto, Waz, Ua Jimea, Washington, Tamari Bar, and of course, Dobe Wine Company in Orcas Island. Thank you all very much Thank you so for much. Uh, sharing uh, the sake with, with the people, because uh, that's part of what this is all about. Without you, we wouldn't have sake in front of all these amazing folks who are sipping along with us. So again, we thank you all very much. One last time, grab a bottle, grab your cup, put it up to the screen for a come by, and uh, we'll take a photo. I don't know if everybody has that. Uh, we'll do a nice little photo for everyone. Come by. Yes, come there by. you go. Come by. 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 Come by.